Hello everyone, I'm Prof. Thom at Catholic University Medical Center of the Korea. I'd like to talk about minimally invasive sinus augmentation using hydrodynamic piezoelectric internal sinus elevation. In order to overcome vertical deficiency of atrophic posterior maxilla, uh, sinus floor elevation either via transcrestal or lateral approach have been used for several decades. The crestal approach is considered to be a less invasive procedure than the lateral approach to sinus augmentation. Therefore, a several uh, crestally approach to sinus augmentation uh, techniques have been introduced by many uh, clinicians. Dayton first introduced the uh, mallet and bone grafting assisted crystal approach technique, which is the uh, osteotome technique. I introduced the uh, piezoelectric internal uh, sinus elevation in it in 2002 and H hydrodynamic piece technique in 2008 uh, to overcome the drawbacks of uh, osteotome technique. This slide shows you traditional internal sinus flow elevation, which is osteotome technique. In order to break sinus flow indirectly, surgical mallet and bone graftings are necessary in this technique. This is uh, one of my uh, early case uh, using uh, osteotome technique. So the slide, this slide shows you uh, uh, 5 to 6 mm radial bone height on right posterior maxilla. So bone added osteotome technique was done. Uh, this is uh, uh, 16 years follow up, yes, and very stable. Our marginal bone is seen after 16 years loading. This is very minimally invasive technique compared to the uh, conventional lateral approach. Some some of the technique is known to have some disadvantages. The trauma, heavy force to internal ear can cause uh, post-operative uh, benign vertigo and hammering can cause emotional stress in the patient. Uncontrolled hammering force can cause the mucosal perforation, and this technique is uh, generally indicated when legitimate bone height is more than 5 mm. Complications associated with us. Some of technique includes post-operate or vertigo, implant failure, acute and delayed sinusitis, and cystic change of sinus mucosa. Several literature uh, defaulted uh, the uh, first operative 
or for T after performing uh, some loss technique. Post-operative vertigo happens due to trauma to internal ear when heavy malleting force is applied to break a sinus floor. This case is the post-operative vertigo that I experienced after doing osteotome technique. As shown on CT scan, the differences of bone height was shown between first and second molar. It was very difficult to break sinus floor on first molar. It took a lot of time. Heavy malleting force was utilized to break sinus floor. As soon as I finished the surgery, this patient complained dizziness. He could not work well. Fortunately, the vertigo recovered after two weeks. This is uh, 16 years in function. The maxillary sinus mucosa may be perforated by excessive pressure from uh, compacting of bone graft. This mucosal perforation can cause acute and or uh, delayed sinusitis. This case done by my colleague uh, showed you post-operative sinusitis caused by excessive pressure of bone graft to sinus mucosa. Post-operative sinus developed two weeks after doing Summers technique. So in order to control sinusitis, the, I made a small bony opening on lateral wall of sinus cavity and I did saline irrigation and I placed a, a rubber drain for, for two days to control uh, post-operative sinusitis. This is a follow-up uh, CT showing the healed maxillary sinus. When the osteotome technique is not properly performed and the implant is placed in a state where the maxillary sinus membrane is perforated, a region may occur in the maxillary sinus membrane. My colleague performed bilateral sinus augmentation using osteotome technique followed by simultaneous implants placement. However, all implants placed on the left posterior maxilla was failed due to uh, protrusion of implant uh, over the perforated sinus mucosa. And take a closer look at uh, the formation of a cyst on the right sinus because the implant apex are protruded over the perforated sinus mucosa. So I informed this patient uh, this implant restoration will be failed sooner or later. This is the cross-sectional images of Combeam CT. The Combeam CT shows you the thickened sinus mucosa uh, on the right side, right side. Left side shows a very low residual bone height. I did uh, bone-headed laterally approached sinus augmentation 
on the left side. The bony window was prepared with uh, a water lace and also plus two which is a gel conditioned allograph was injected in the new compartment under the elevated sinus mucosa. Instead of placing collagen barrier membrane, austere inductive bony window was repositioned to accelerate bone regeneration in the sinus. And leach augmentation using same bone graft was performed after implant placement. Primary research was done. Uh, this is uh, about, uh, about five years in function. The posterior implant supported the restoration failed after five years of function, as I mentioned before. Please take a closer look at the, the heel, the maxillary sinus, because the causative factor was eliminated. I used the ENT endoscopy in order to figure out how much I can elevate a sinus mucosa during performing osteotome technique. You can see mucosal elevation during osteotome technique. And take a closer look at very small, tiny mucosal preparation around here after achieving 5 mm high mucosal elevations here. This is mucosal elevation at the uh, second molar area. You can see the bios particle through the elevated sinus mucosa on tooth number 26. Uh, this is uh, mucosa elevation on tooth number 27. You can see uh, a small dome shaped, limited uh, dome shaped sinus elevation on this slide. According to several literatures, the implanted body is uh, protruded 2 mm, less than 2 mm uh, over the perforated sinus mucosa. The sinus mucosa can be regenerated again along the exposed implant apex. However, when the implant apex is protruded over the sinus mucosa, I mean more than uh, 4 mm, the sinus mucosa cannot be regenerated again over the exposed implant body. Therefore, the foreign materials are accumulated along the exposed implant body 
and this foreign accumulated foreign materials can cause delayed sinusitis. And I collected uh, and published uh, some data using peace technique. And, and my data was published uh, in implant dentistry in 2009. The peace technique uh, breaks sinus flow directly, so does not require surgical mallet and uh, this technique uh, does not rely on the heavy malleting force in order to break sinus flow. Uh, here's my case I'd like to share with you. The sinus floor was that uh, penetrated with ultrasonic uh, device, piezo surgery, directly. And uh, in order to elevate sinus mucosa gel condition, the grafting material was uh, placed through the osteotomy side and the gentle uh, finger force was used to push grafting material up uh, uh, to the, into the sinus cavity. No malleting force is required. And now you can see it about 10 millimeter uh, uh, sinus elevation. Once the procedure was done, this is a six years in function. You can see the beautiful sinus elevation around uh, implant. Uh, there are many advantages of a peace technique. Uh, no hammering is needed when breaking sinus flow, so this technique is free from vertigo. Uh, this technique uh, reduces the risk of sinus membrane perforation when approaching sinus flow. A soft and controlled force is used to elevate sinus membrane. So the rate of mucosal perforation is uh, reduced. What is the what are the disadvantages of a uh, piece technique? This technique depends on bone compaction for mucosal elevation, as the same as uh, some technique and so uh, the bone compaction uh, process 
requires a long surgical time. HP's technique has inspired the development of other crystal approached sinus augmentation using water pressure. This animation shows you step-by-step -step procedure of HP's technique. First, measure residual bone height on implant side and select one millimeter shorter HP's tip to sinus floor because there is some uh, radiographic magnification in measuring uh, residual bone height. After breaking sinus floor with ultrasonic vibration, just apply water pressure for 10 to 20 seconds to elevate sinus mucosa. In order to widen implant site, 2.8 mm wide cylindrical HP tip is used in order to place 4 mm to 4.5 mm wide implant body with good stability on the ridge with very low bone height. I prefer to place CGF or PRF in the sinus over placing bone grafting material. This slide shows you uh, advantages of HP's technique. HP's technique usually does not rely on bone compaction for sinus elevation. Compared to any other crystal approach, this technique is a very simple and predictable technique. Surgical mallet and osteotomes are not required to elevate sinus mucosa. This technique is free from benign paroxysmal vertigo. You can elevate sinus mucosa up to 20 to 30 mm high thanks to water pressure within, within 20 seconds. This slide shows you a multi-center 
retrospective study on HP's technique, which was published in 2012 in Journal of Implant Dentistry. 250 sinus augmentation was included in this study. Residual, mean residual bone height was about 6 mm. The rate of mucosal perforation was about 3% and the rate of implants was about 97%. According to this clinical study, hydrodynamic piece technique could be the easiest and the safest surgical method for sinus elevation. HP technique can be an alternative surgical method to lateral sinus augmentation.